Greetings, loves. Um, I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about the full moon in Aries. So let's just jump right in. Um, the uh, This moon cycle started in Libra on October 6th. Um, when we began the cycle, we talked a little bit about what the Libran themes represent. And so we said, if you can remember that, um, Libra is a sign that is ruled by Venus um, and is a sign that has Saturn exalted in that sign. And so you know, a lot of the themes in Libra season are around um, justness, uh, justice, like legal, literally legal stuff, um, themes of the high heart and our high heart values, like the things we really value in this world. Um, and uh, with Saturn there, we're also looking at um, themes around our personal karma and how our values of our high heart are being applied. And so uh, we're looking at, are we living in right relationship or are we you know, living in a lot of reactivity? And so that's where we began the cycle. Now, the full moon is always the culmination point um, in any cycle. It's kind of where we pivot into um, the receptive part of the cycle, like where we're receiving um, all that we were harvesting or, or putting effort into at the beginning of the cycle. Um, and so one of the, the things we talked a little bit about at the beginning of the cycle around the um, time of the new moon was that Mars was beginning a new cycle. And so Mars cycles last um, about two years. They um, have a culmination point as well, which is when Mars goes retrograde. And he went retrograde, if you can remember, at this time last fall. Many astrologers look at Mars cycles a lot like the hero's myth, if you're familiar with that, Joseph Campbell's work around um, you know, the beginning of the journey, the crisis point in the middle, and then how that resolves itself. And so we look at Mars uh, retrograde as a crisis point. So just as a point of reference for you, looking back you know, at what all was happening in your own life and in the collective, last year in the fall. Mars is um, a planet that rules our third chakra, our will, our relationship to power. He is in his highest expression, the hero archetype, and um, in his shadow expression, he can be somebody who um, abuses or misuses power. Uh, Mars rules both Aries and Scorpio. And so those are signs that are related to power in different ways, um, but they both do relate to personal power. Um, so also there is a uh, T-square between the sun and Mars and Libra and the moon and Eris, the goddess of chaos and discord in Aries, and they're making a square to Pluto and Capricorn. And I want to talk a little bit about the, how these archetypes are working together and, and what's going on in the collective in regards to these archetypes. Oh, going into 2020, um, the you know, many astrologers, including myself, could see that there was just a lot of intensity. We had Saturn that made a, um, a conjunction to Pluto in Capricorn, and then we knew Mars was going to be going retrograde, and he made plenty of squares within that retrograde to Pluto, and he also um, conjuncted Eris in that time. So this kind of Mars, Eris, Pluto energy has been really strong in the field. Now, prior to going into 2020, you know, my view of where we were as a society or as a collective was that we were moving uh, together in this very linear line in this um, direction of accumulation and, um, you know, like material gain that we had been making, you know, steady improvements in healthcare in the areas of longevity, 
in the areas of prosperity. And so things seemed to be going really well. And we had a lot of momentum towards both accumulation and progress. And I think that for the most part, it's easy to fall asleep kind of hypnotically when things are going really well. And um, at least here in the West, I think that we really had this, um, we lived under this kind of illusion of immortality, like we were untouchable and we had a lot of safety. You know, I've never in my lifetime, I mean, lived through any type of like war that affected life, like daily life here or famine or, um, you know, any of the terrible kind of living conditions that our ancestors expected that they would live under in, in their lifetimes. And so when um, the pandemic hit and, um, and, you know, we began following the directions um, and, and doing what we felt like was the best, safest thing to do. Um, I tried to roll with the punches and stay very optimistic. And I think a lot of people did that as well. You know, we were all just trying to stay safe and kind of maintain uh, the life that that we had already built, you know, and, and that, that has been the goal for so many people. This entire pandemic is just like, how do we get back to normal? How do we, um, you know, just stay positive and, and, um, you know, get back onto that, that kind of wheel of accumulation and prosperity and safety. And so, um, what the the Mars archetype and Eris and Pluto have been doing just from the begin the outset of the pandemic and still now today, through essentially an, almost an entire Mars cycle, has been um, asking us to one look at underworld themes like no, you are not immortal, you are not untouchable illusion or safety is an illusion, security is an illusion, death is real, and there are some significant things um, that are not working, even though um, you were on this cycle of prosperity and safety. I mean, there, there, there was a huge cost to that. And so humanity has been in this kind of, um, you know, death initiation, like having to come face to face with that. And we have all reacted in uh, very different ways. Some of us have really surrendered to um, the fact that we could die. We've had our own death and rebirth um, experiences through, throughout this. Um, we're really okay with um, with whatever happens, you know, coming face to face with our own death, we're very um, at peace with that. And then other people are really gripping for safety and really manipulating and contorting their bodies and their lives um, in order to maintain an illusion of safety. And this plight right here is causing a great split or division inside of society. Now, <laughs> we're at the beginning of a new Mars cycle and this Mars cycle is being seated in Libra. The last one was seated in Virgo and Virgo is a sign of health. And so there were some astrologers that called that, you know, we may see a pandemic sometime in the last cycle, but now this Mars cycle is being seated in Libra. And like, we could look at, you know, what the next two years has to, um, has in store for us in terms of this Mars cycle. And this is kind of what I think. The Mars being um, cycle being seated in the sign of Venus means that um, how we use our will, I think, is going to mm, transform a little bit and we'll use more, uh, we'll begin to learn to use more feminine models of power and will. And so with a masculine model, remember masculine is yang and feminine is yin. We're not talking about genders. Um, like a masculine model of will is like the power over, exerting power or pressure onto something to make it surrender to or, or give way to whatever it is that you want to have done. And a more feminine way of 
of applying will is kind of like if you think of the um the martial art Aikido, where you're using the momentum of cycles, they, they actually use the flow of the geometric shape, a circle, in order to um, exert their power in those ways. So we're going to be looking at how we can use things like magnetism, um, yeah, momentum, you know, capitalizing on um, power that already exists within natural cycles uh, to exert our our will and, and get things done. I think we'll start to see more people tapping into that type of power structure and also um, partnership. I think that we're in the death knells of the dominator or AKA patriarchal system. And we are going to begin to see more collaboration and partnership over this next two years. And this is the seeding point. And so I don't expect that we'll see a lot of this um, until well into the Mars cycle and maybe not even until after the crisis point. So after the retrograde in the next two years. But I just, I wanted to add this in here so that you can plot yourself on this map and begin to keep in mind that there really are two different ways that one can exert their power and their will and, and begin to see how you use it when you want to get something done. Um, so that's Mars. And then the other thing that is just really archetypally profound, um, this full moon is that there is that T-square between Eris, who's uh, conjunct the moon, um, Pluto up in Capricorn, and Mars here beside the sun. And so what that's really asking me to look at, and, and, and I think it's, it's gonna be both on the collective level and in our own lives is our relationship to power and authority. Um, you know, are we um, just surrendering or collapsing under the weight of power? How are we responding to power? What is our relationship with our own personal power? Uh, you, like, are we able to, um, to feel empowered and see our power or do we, you know, employ compensatory behaviors? Like, you know, if somebody is, isn't feeling very empowered or very confident, um, they will use false, like arrogance or something to cover for that. And so, it's just something to kind of keep in mind as we move through this cycle with um, Pluto up in Capricorn. You know, he's definitely, he's in that sign of government systems, control, hierarchy. Um, and so, you know, how do we relate um, to the hierarchies in our lives? I mean, are we using them to serve us or are we only using all of our life force energy in service to it. You know, like, like, like for instance, um, let me give you an example. So uh, the government has a particular narrative, like they make an announcement. And then are we looking at and inspecting that for ourselves and then deciding, yes, I am a, a free and clear choice participant in whatever the government's suggestion is, or do we not look at it and not use any of our own free will and we just promote whatever they're saying because that's um, because our relationship to our own power is in some way distorted? I don't know if that's a great example, but I'm trying to give an example off the cuff here. Um, Pluto and Eris will continue to uh, do their targeted demolition projects, so we'll continue to see I think more chaos out in the collective, although um, th there are some signs that some of this stuff will start to cohere shortly, meaning like there's been a ton of incoherence and noise out in the field. And I think that there's a way that we'll begin to get some coherence. The other thing that um, I think is lovely is that um, with Mars, being in the underworld and having traveled so close to the sun, um, that can make us feel a little tired. It can like zap our energy a little bit. And then also we had several planets retrograde 
that are all now um, beginning this month to move forward. So on the sixth, Pluto moved um, out of retrograde. He's now um, moving forward. Saturn on the 11th. And then on the 18th, Jupiter and Mercury are now all going in forward motion. And so it's a really lovely sign that it's time to begin the building of something new, um, that we can begin using that feminine type of energy or will to begin, um, you know, putting some of the stuff that might have been on hold um, into play. And let's see. There was a couple of others that I just wanted to touch on. Um, sorry. Uh, nope, I'm sorry. That's it. So um, we're just remembering that this month, um, we are looking, you know, at, I think this is kind of the month where we either wrap up or for the first time come face to face to our relationship to power and control. And that like gripping for control in the face of death, like how, how do we respond personally? I mean, we've seen how our society responds, um, but what about us? You know, are we able to surrender? Are we able to um, harness the power of natural cycles? Um, are we collapsing completely in the face of death? Are we fighting it? You know, how are we using our energy in the face of um, the underworld themes that have come up so strongly? And um, also personal power. Remember, that's another theme for this month is just looking at the ways you relate to personal power. And um, happy beginning of the new Mars cycle. I hope you enjoyed this short little uh, clip about the uh, Aries new moon.